So one of our members posted an interesting question, and I thought I'd lean into this today because she, I believe if I understood her post correctly, she is interested in two men and one of the men looks good on paper and the other man, she has a greater physical attraction and she feels confused. So I thought I'd lean into this conversation. What happens? What should we do when we feel confused? and how to make the best choices for ourselves. So I think first and foremost, it's critically important to ask yourself what it is you're looking for in a relationship. What kind of relationship are you looking for? Are you looking for marriage? Are you looking to live together with someone? Are you looking for a relationship where you're spending three or four days and nights a week together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork building skills, both in your personal and your professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy. Okay, that's in the one layer. Or are you looking for a cyber relationship? Are you looking for a friends with benefits? Are you looking for a situation ship? Or are you looking for a casual relationship? Now, many in the dating realm start off going, I just want something casual. I want no pressure. Okay. Well, here's the challenge when you want something casual and no pressure. And the other person wants casual and no pressure. Well, you might elevate your desire to something greater and they stay at that level. Okay. So I think it's critically important to begin when you're, when you find yourself confused, ask yourself, what type of relationship am I looking for first and foremost? Now, when it comes to men, I think it's really also critically important to understand that while many of you desire men are the leaders of the relationship and you can just sit back in your feminine energy and just let him claim you. Sounds like a great narrative, you know, for a Disney movie or a rom-com or something like that. And yet the reality is when we're meeting total strangers these days and we don't know their values, we don't know their lifestyles, we don't know their backstory, we don't know who their family and friends are. I think it's critically important for you ladies who I coach to first be in charge of your relationship destiny. In other words, don't give that job to the guy. You are in charge of your destiny because sadly, many women operate from the premise of, I need you to love me so I can feel good about myself. And in that, you, many of you want to be validated by the man to, and more importantly, you have this expectation. The man is the leader of the relationship. And while that sounds great, what I mean by leader is I don't believe when relationships are a one up, one down, in other words, someone's on top and the other one's on bottom, although in the bedroom that can work well, <laughs> especially when you take turns. Ah, taking turns. See, that's really what I want to lean into today because when it comes to making a decision, first decide what it is you want more importantly, and do you want to co-create with someone? Co-create with someone. And then ask yourself, is does this person have the capacity to co-create? The person that looks good on paper probably does. But you have to understand, and, and certainly a man who you feel uh, a physical connection with might also be as well. So then it really boils down to, if you're going to make a decision, ask yourself, do you have chemistry with one another? Do you share the same values with each other? Does this person's lifestyle compatible with mine? Can we blend lives together? And in addition, does this person have the emotional maturity to lean into a more serious relationship? Do they have the relationship skills? So this begs the deeper question, are you going to ask the deeper questions? Well, I'm begging you to do this deeper question, but are you going to ask the more important questions in the early stages of dating to determine if you have the same values? Are your lifestyles compatible with one another? And does this person have the emotional maturity? So it goes beyond asking the question. I was funny. I was on an interview recently and they thought that the best question to ask someone is where do you see yourself in five years? You know, 
I'd like to see myself as a billionaire. I'd like to see that, but does that mean that's actually going to happen? And sometimes they might say that they want a serious relationship. But when they say they want a serious relationship, what does that really mean? What does that mean? Those are just words until you actually describe what it is that looks like. So when you're faced with a challenging decision where there's two options, first you have to narrow it down to, to choosing one option. In other words, it, it comes down to choosing the best option for you. And here's the thing in the dating process. I'm a big believer of investing in one person at a time. It gets very convoluted when we when there's circular dating, when there's multiple dating, when there's there's this dating of, you know, without real intent. This now I'm I'm not here to suggest which one you choose. The reality of life though is you know, 99 out of 100 people aren't a fit for you anyway. So you can explore the one with chemistry, but if it's just physical chemistry and you don't share the same values, you don't have blendable lifestyle, and you don't have emotional maturity, that's not going to work out. And while the person that looks good on paper, if there isn't some sort of connection with one another, that's going to be challenging. I will say this, though. I've interviewed thousands of women who have told roughly about who are I've interviewed thousands of women of which a significant percentage of them are in healthy, happy relationships. A third of them told me I wasn't attracted to my guy on the first, second or third date. I wasn't attracted to my guy on the first, second or third date. So something changed. Here's the thing. If you feel an emotional connection with someone, that's a good place to start. If you feel a intellectual connection with someone, we call that sapiosexual, that's a good place to start. If you feel some sort of, you know, if there's something about their personality that you find interesting, that's a good place to start, okay? But at the end of the day, it all starts with you. And what that means is get clarity on the type of relationship you want and only focus on investing time with those people who are capable of actually leaning into that kind of relationship. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know. All right, that's enough of me pontificating today. I hope you found value in this video. Please post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. If you also do, please tell your friends about Midlife Love Mastery. Send them to my website, jonathanasley.com. Have them click the group coaching button so they can join our fantastic group. And I'm going to sign off this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm asking you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.